Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I know you guys have been enjoying my riveting debates about monogamy with Chad Johnson, but on this episode, we shift gears a little bit. We go across the pond, actually, to an artist who was integral when I started the series. He was one of the first people I had on the show. We shot a really cool game of pool together. Jay Sean, the British R&B singer. And why this episode, I think it's quite interesting. It kind of shows, we talk about American artists breaking into the mainstream, but rarely we look at just how, um, how far this culture has reached and touched. And what was really interesting about the conversation with Jay Sean was him touching upon how much artists and the art form is really appreciated in London and in Europe, whereas certain artists over here we call irrelevant are still relevant o o over there. And you know, it, it's, it's, I really appreciated Sean's passion for just basically the, explaining just how amazing this art form is to him. You know, this is a guy that gave up a possible career as a doctor to pursue his dream of being an R&B singer. So I, I think you guys will enjoy this conversation. It's a, it's a really great, it's a great talk with the artist. You know, it's a great conversation and I'm happy I got to reconnect with Jay Sean while he was down here in South Beach. And uh, enjoy. And remember, please visit I'mPeterBay.com. Thank you. Just real people, real convo. I'm Peter Bailey, and after my debate with Chad Johnson, I headed to South Beach to share a nightcap with Jay Sean. The British crooner discussed his newborn and getting back to his artistic center. How you doing, Jay? What's up, brother? Good to see you again, man. Man, it's been three years. Crazy. I know. Time is flying. The last time we were shooting pool, now we're here on the balcony. That's right. <laughs> Miami. Still in Miami. Exactly. You know, Jay, things have happened. Um, your last album was called Neon. And yes. when I think of Neon, it's searching for that light, that, that, that thing we all strive for exactly. and, and look for. And you're family man now. I am, man. It's the How's most that? beautiful change. It's the most incredible thing that has uh, honestly happened to me in, in my life. I know it wow. sounds crazy because all my, you know, all my friends, we're a similar age. Of course. Some of them, because they're not in the industry. They move on to that part of their life a little earlier than me. You yeah. know what I mean? Come Facebook out. Facebook pictures, little, yeah. little Tommy, everybody, right. yeah. You know, they, if they do the normal thing. You know, they go to the school, uni, get a job, exactly. married kids. Exactly. In my field of work, it's not, it's not as easy to, to, to settle down because mm -hmm. you're flying around the whole world to find mm -hmm. the right girl, you know, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And man, you know, when, when, I, when I found out that we were expecting, man, mm -hmm. that, that like, it changed me instantly. Huh. Like the focus, all of this is beautiful. All of the, all of the life, all of the traveling, all of the fame, the yeah. fans, the, the attention, the girls, all of that good stuff is great. Mm -hmm. But nothing really means more than that little thing right there that doesn't care what daddy does. Yeah. Don't care how many albums daddy sold. Don't care who daddy's hanging with. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Who, who daddy met? Nah. Yeah, just yeah. wants to come home, give you a little hug and some love. And I think that's the that's that's the realness right there. That's what mm. I am. Um, that's what I've always wanted. Mm. As an artist, you have a very strong female fan base, you know, that come to you for that edge, yes. that appeal. Your family guy now. Right. Does that take the edge off the music a little I think bit? The, I think the people in the in the uh, in my team might have been nervous about that. Of course. Management, PR, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. But you know what I found that is really interesting mm. is that you know not a single fan has seemed to turn away or hate it or written disp uh, spiteful comments. Mm. Because when it comes to a kid, man, you've got to be real evil to be like, ah, <laughs> he's having a kid, you mm. know, forget him. Mm. Like, or, uh, you, but when, you, when you're with a girl, they can be nasty to the, uh, to the girl. That can happen. Of course. And you've seen, I've seen that in the industry, like so-and-so, like, I, need, and like, I don't know, Justin Timberlake might hook up with a girl and they start bitching her out. But when it yeah, comes to a lot to of a people kid, usher with the older right. woman thing. Yeah. But when it comes to that baby, mm. that I think hits everyone there. And, mm. and I think that that's, um, that's when you can't really uh, you can't really hate on that, you know. What I mean, I think uh, that's that's the, been the interesting thing. If anything, they're just really happy for me. You've talked about infusing more soul, yes, into your sound yes. because a lot of your American fans don't know. No, they don't know. That was your basis, yes, beyond the pop, yes. 
how has that experience inspired the music as yet? Well, I think what, what, ha what happened, I don't know whether that, uh, whether being a family man and stuff uh, really affected that. What happened was, I came to this point, mm -hmm. a point of realization where I was like, okay, Jay, it's been, it's been like 10 years that you've been a, a signed singer, songwriter, performer, entertainer. 10 years down the line, mm -hmm. I think I had the right this time on my fourth album to be like, okay, guys, you know what? Like, I need to, I need to give you what where I'm at in my life right now. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, doing the, the the music for little teens or tweens. That, that club well, stuff has to get it's old. It's not for me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now it was then, and it's yeah. cool because yeah. that was that era of my life. Exactly. But I think you have to let your fans grow with you and mature mm -hmm. with you. And um, and not only that, I just wanted America to finally get to hear what I did before I even came. We're outside. All right. Sorry. So, you know, I wanted America to hear what I did before I even came here. Mm -hmm. It was a weird thing, man. I had a huge amount of success um, with this massive, with massive pop records. Yeah. When that happens, you yeah. really paint the picture. Jay Sean does this. That's all we know him for. So when do. you try to switch it up and be like, oh, but guess, hey guys, guess what? I also, they're like, nah, but you do that, right? Aren't you the guy who does that? You're a soulful kind of brother too. <laughs> right? So I'm like, yeah, but we're not all one trick ponies. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like just as human beings, we don't all just party, party, party all day mm. long. There's times when we're introspective. There's times when we, you know, when we're emotional, we want to cry, we want to laugh, we want to smile. It's not all just one emotion. Exactly. And I needed America to hear that. The thing is, Jay, if you think about it, Ah, that's a very good point. Do you think comparing the American fan base to the international fan base, are we just a little bit more shallow that we don't want to receive that depth and introspection or No, I don't think so. I don't think it's that I don't think it's that uh, that deep. I think it's it's as simple as this. My entry point into America was off of uh, fun up tempo party records. Yeah. So that's all they got to know me for. The people who knew my music beforehand, the people mm -hmm. who did their research became hardcore fans. It was yeah. like, let me check out this guy's other music. Yeah. Would have then discovered, oh, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. He does this kind of stuff. Exactly. He does ballads, he does mid-tempos, he does R&B songs, he does beautiful pop R&B songs. Whatever it is, they, they did their research and they found that out. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that when I, when I uh, tour around America, certain parts of America uh, have done their research and know my other stuff. And they were refreshed. Yes. And it's funny because that's the thing. If we know you as the baby, are you down guy? Right. You're very infused in philanthropy. Yeah. You mentioned once, you know, just being a person not giving. Uh huh. It's, it's something missing there. Yeah. How important is that to you now, even more so as you're older? Yeah, it is, man. I mean, I think, I think um, one of the things that really uh, strikes me as odd about fame and celebrity is. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we are given so much. We are very blessed um, that not only do we uh, make good money from doing what we do, then on top of that, people want to chuck free things at you all the time. <laughs> oh, no, bro, don't worry, don't pay for... It's on me, yo, it's on yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, thanks, but, you know, I, can, mm. I can't afford to pay for it, but mm. they don't want to do it. So then mm. you start thinking to yourself, and I ain't knocking free stuff, and we all love free things, but you do start thinking to yourself, okay, how much of this is, is actually ethically right, morally right, to just take, take, take all the time without actually giving a little somewhere else when you know you're in a position that you can do that. Whether it's signing a big check for a school or whether it's, and some people, of course, mm. are in the position where they can give millions, of donate course. millions. Mm. Others might not be. Others might be like, you know what? I can't afford to do that much, but I tell you what I can afford to do. I'll, I'll take this platform yeah. and I'll try to do good with it. Yeah. I'll try to spread a good message. I'll try to mm. back a good campaign or whatever it is. And that's what I like to do, man. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's really interesting. Drake, we mm. talked about his album and how he's doing. You're that, you're that entity within mm -hmm. the Cash Money family that's on your own path. Mm -hmm. Is Birdman, are they still giving you that free lane to do exactly what you want to do? You know, I switched it on them uh, midway. I did. I <laughs> did switched you? it on them midway. Um, you know, I made some mistakes musically. In I, what uh, sense? I made some mistakes musically, and 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 it's okay to do that because you learn from that. Mm. Because you see, I got like I said, I made so much success from the pop lane. What happens when you end when you're in the pop world? Mm. Pop changes all the time. It changes. One minute, what is popular is 
say, I don't know, uh, rock music. Then what might be popular is dance music. Yeah. Then what's popular is pop R&B music. Mm. Now remember when Neo and them came out with So Sick and Sexy Love and all that, there was that era of beautiful pop R&B. You had Beyonce beautiful. doing Irreplaceable yeah. and all those kind of that Stargate era. Yeah. But then it all switched up and it went into dance. Very quickly after I came out, like mm -hmm. a couple, about a year after, mm. everything went up tempo. Exactly. So guess what? Your Rihannas, your Neos, your Ushers, your Chris Browns, mm -hmm. your Enriques, me, all of us felt the pressure because huh. radio weren't playing mid, te mid tempos anymore. No, they weren't. Radio weren't playing anything apart from. Yeah. So what do you do? Yeah. What do you do? You try to adapt. You're like, okay. This might not be exactly what I'm used to yeah. or what I necessarily feel in my heart. Exactly. But what do you do? If you don't jump on the boat, you drown. Mm. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna try to mess with this. As long as I give it my flavor, let me try to mess with this. Mm. Turned out, bro, that wasn't my thing. You know what I mean? And oh. I knew that and I had to, res I had to, I had mm. to um, face up to the fact that what I ended up doing was I departed too far from what my heart really is into. And your heart is that soul music. And fans can tell that. Mm. The real fans can tell, ah, eh, I don't know. It's like I know people who say all the mm. time, yo man, I wish we had that old Usher back. Or I wish yeah. that we had this back. D'Angelo. You know what I'm Where? saying? Where's, yeah. You know, Jay, I'm, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna ask you a real question. Mm. Fans who are fans of, of, of the hardcore, the Neo Souls, yeah. the Anthony Hamilton, yes. the D'Angelo's, the, the yes. one of those Neo Soul purists that say, hold up, this is a British guy. Right. Doesn't really look like the Neo Soul guy. Right. Why should we embrace it? Because I don't, think, I don't think it, can, it matters what color, what race, yeah. what background you are. Let's talk about some, that's old school. Let's yeah. talk about John B, how he managed to get. <laughs> I, I remember how did John, John B get? He, get, had, he, that he got a pass. Though. He had that pressure. Yeah, of course he did, but he got yeah. a pass. They were like, damn, this white boy's singing some nice R&B music, and but I, it's all right. And yeah, he, he was, he got a little, after a while, he got accepted. He got it, a little it, pass, it, right? It did, it did. Okay, and then of course, do need I say, uh, Justin Timberlake and Robin Thicke, mm -hmm. they get the pass, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I think if you're believable, and then if you sing from the heart, and you write those songs that move people, I think ultimately, People might go, ah, they might actually be more impressed because they might be like, I didn't think you could do all that, but you can. Yeah. Like, what, like Eminem, to this yeah. day, he always I, he used to feel the pressure to prove himself mm -hmm. because he was the odd one out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But ultimately, why do they give him a pass? Because mm -hmm. he's, 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 he's nice with it. But I think those artists too, they respect the culture. Yes. It doesn't look like they're coming from a place trying to exploit the culture. No, that's very true. Indeed. And the thing is, you have to live and breathe that. And right. you know, I in England, it's a funny thing, man. We we are we're, we're heavy into that beautiful soul R and B music that's because heavy. All of the yeah. artists that you're talking about who don't tour America are anymore. Huge over there. D'Angelo, Music Soul Child, Donnell Jones, all of those guys. Oh, yeah. Donnell, they're still playing in England. They do shows and sell out five thousand wow. people venues in England because we're loyal to the music because we hear it and go you know what I grew up on you and you what you got a new album out I'm gonna go and check you in concert that's how we are we're, we're not like that over here we're kind of like we're gonna go with the popular kid right now and, and, and that's okay whatever every every country is different you know and I think what, what happens is because you've got so much new talent coming up mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's like with the rappers like mm -hmm. I have to tip my hat to the legends but I know that the kids now they're into they the. Have no they idea. have no I, I idea. I asked someone who Tupac was. This my little godson. He was like, "Who?" I was there like, you go. "That's that's a felony." I think maybe it's a social media environment we're in, where we're in a consumer, where we're in a very abbreviated society. Yes. I remember. I, I think when I listen to your, your new music, it seems like you know what Jay Sean is saying. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna take my time with this. Yes. I'm gonna make this time. I'm not just gonna shovel out something because I gotta. I gotta be hot mm -hmm. as well. Is that something you're, now it's, it's a more patient process? It's a patient process and what matters to me more mm. than uh, commercial success, than all of that stuff, really, honest to God, what matters to me mm. more is that I can hold my head up high when I walk around and say, you know what, I delivered a good piece of work. Yeah. I just, I'm proud of my work. That's all I ever wanted was to be proud of my work. And I don't care about anything else because I didn't do this to, like I said, become a superstar celebrity. I did it so that I could, Whatever it was that I was doing, I could be proud of it. I was about to be a doctor, you know this. I, know I would that. have been proud for the rest of my life. Very prominent doctor, yeah. That I did a, a great job saving people's lives, you know, doing something good. Now, how can I go from that mm. to, to, to doing stuff, 
that might give me commercial success, but at the end of the day, I have to walk like this, like, oh, sh yeah, I know, yeah, that song, yeah, I know, it gave me a lot of money, but damn, I ain't proud of it. I hate singing it every time I'm on stage. Like, oh, I don't want to do that, man. You know what I mean? I want you to be proud of the, of, of the work that I did, and that's what I did with Neon. Indeed, indeed. The song with Mars and Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. we're, in, we're in Miami, we're yeah. in Ross's town. How was that on set with the boss? It was crazy. I mean, I remember talking to, to, to Rick when we were in, um, we were in a club about three years ago mm. in Miami, and um, he was there, and I was with Baby, and, and he came up to me, and he was like, yo, man, he's like, you know, congratulations, a part of family now, boom, 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 whatever you need, I got you. And I said to him, I was like, listen, man, um, when I write the right song, <laughs> I would love for you to be on it. And I knew it wasn't back then, because uh, then I was caught up in the pop world, and I knew right. I couldn't. And now on this album, I had the chance to finally switch it up a little mm. bit. And, um, and I found the right song for him, and he loves it. And, uh, and he, like I said, he did his thing on it, and um, and I was just and I got to give props to Khaled as well, DJ Khaled, yeah. who you know he really facilitated facilitated that. It was a real that. ballad, man. You know what I mean? It was a real soulful ballad. Thank you, man. It, it, it was that. I guess it was an old J. There's a song, Breathless, uh -huh. that you had way back in the day that somebody put me onto. Right. Yeah. See. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. I'm doing my own work. That's that soulful. Yeah, man. J. And that's it, yeah. you know, and and. and um, I think it just feels good. A lot of people, their comments when they heard that song, a lot of people, mm. including the PDs at so many radio stations, who grew, remember, they they know all about that. They on the 90s R&B. They grew up yeah. on it. The, they're like, oh, man, thank mm. you. They literally went, thank you, because it took them back and yeah. gave them something refreshing because every, everything else they were getting was mm. oops, 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 And they were like, I've had enough of that, man. This is something different, and I like that. You know, it's, 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 it's okay to sit down and absorb some soul. Yeah, man, day. it's okay. I just, I just feel like, you know, um, it's, it's a, music, music is a tough thing. The, the, the mainstream music and, like I said, pop music especially is a really, really tough world to exist in and to, mm. to stay current, uh, to stay uh, relevant in. We were, we were discussing that term, relevant. Yes. I don't like that term. Yeah, I hate that word as well. relevant to me is what's popular now. Exactly. So you're telling me that you know, Donnell Jones, who I was right. just listening to where I want to be the other exactly. day, he's relevant to me because he, he's telling, he's Thank speaking you, to me. So, <laughs> Thank you. He's speaking to me. Thank so, you. you know what I call them people who say you're not relevant anymore? Mm. They're jumping on the bandwagon. That's what Indeed. they do. It's like, it's like what? If you were, I don't know, I don't follow football like you guys. Let's yeah. say you were a, a Giants fan or whatever, yeah. right? Oh, and then they fall off. I know what, you're going to go and be a glory hunter and go on to who, who exactly. won the last Super Bowl? You're exactly. going to suddenly start supporting them because mm. they're what's popular and they're the relevant team now? Like, nah, because mm. stay true to yourself. If that's mm -hmm. who you were into, stay true to it. Like, mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm not into those people who just, you know, ride, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the new popular artists and forget yeah. about the ones that paved the way. Let's exactly. talk about the people who paved the way because if exactly. it weren't for them, these new cats wouldn't mm. be able to come up. If you had a choice between these artists that we just discussed, who would be your dream collaboration? Man, it's no secret that Jay is my favorite uh, MC. You okay. know, Jay Z is my favorite. He he has been from I remember back when Original Flavor when I heard mm -hmm. him on that, and I was like, man, I was like, this guy is insane. I followed him all the way regional without all the way up to now. What makes him such an insane artist to you? Because he doesn't conform. He doesn't conform. He doesn't think, oh, this is the latest fad. I'm gonna use this. Oh, this is the latest producer. I'm gonna use him. Or this is the latest style of rapping. I'm gonna go there. Mm -hmm. He does what he does. Jay will always give you Jay. Am I wrong? On every yeah. album, Jay will always give you Jay. He talk, he keeps it real with himself and with his fans. And I think with him, you always know what to expect. It's not like, oh, this don't sound like him. It sounds like he's trying to be, you know, current. It's interesting because you know he had I mean? the Vanity Fair article, but he, for the first time, discussed his past. Drug dealing in Brooklyn and one. And I, I think the mainstream world who don't, who doesn't know that Jay from Marcy, right? That's the first time they will. So that's what. He took that risk with being real right. to the mainstream media where he's on a platform now. He doesn't have to tell these people that he hustled before. That's it. And, and, and that's why, again, that's what I love about Jay-Z is that he's, uh, he's true to his art. He's absolutely yeah. true to his art. If you, if you ask me, the Magna Carta album, I, I personally, is one of my favorites he's ever done because he, I feel like he took it back to that real hip-hop, hard hip-hop sound. Yeah. And, it, and then all the other people who come in after was like, oh shit, I better toughen up my beats. I better toughen yeah. up my, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what's funny, it what's interesting talking to you is that I realized there's a greater appreciation for hip hop, it seems, overseas. I think yeah, you guys yeah. are purists. Yeah, we're very pure with it, and like, that's what I said, and we're loyal with it as well. You know what I mean? Like, hmm. as I said, um, we will, you know, people in England and Europe, you know, they'll go to a Kendrick Lamar concert, but it don't mean that if Grand Pooba 
came. They're going to show them the same love. They're going to be like, oh, shit, grab poop. Yo, I remember when I... And they'll go. and Because they're, they're wow. fans. They're still fans. They don't yeah. just stop being a fan because someone else is popping. You know what I mean? Mm, That's what yeah. I love about it. My man. And you've always stayed true to Nightcap, Respect. man. For, Thank for, you, brother. From the day we were shooting the pool. You know that. <laughs> you know that. Indeed, <laughs> you know that. Indeed. My man. Cool. people, real calm.